Oh, yeah, him. there he is. Let's get more no! streets are going this year. All the way from the Windy City, the one and only Rick Santelli joins us here. Clap him in. Set. Clap him in. Oh, there we go. Clap him in. Royalty. Can he join us with his world famous easel, by the way? Well, I do apologize. I, I don't have all my equipment, and I couldn't do a really pretty chart. But before we get to that, I'd like to say a few things. Mm -hmm. I personally always find anniversary dates very key, and I can't help thinking about September of 81 when we had the all-time high closing yield just shy of 16 percent. So what I'm talking about here might be dancing between the raindrops. You never want to go against a market that is burning to the upside, but you might want to give it a pause if it looks like it's going to back away a bit. But in the grand scheme of things, I think rates are going higher. So let's go to the charts. Like I said, not my best work, but high, low, perpendicular midpoint. We always pay attention to those, especially when one of those points is the all-time low closing yield at a half of 1 percent. So you take the high, you take the low, you connect it, you find that midpoint, you draw a perpendicular line. And what you find is it just keeps you on the straight and narrow. Those are very key. The more important the spike levels are, whether it's a key high or key bottom, those make it work that much better. Now, this chart is really off scale. Remember, when you're doing these charts, you got to use logarithmic paper. This is just a rough gauge, but there's your near 16%, SEP and 81 for your anniversary date. And the whole point of this chart is, is that we have a lot of potential room to run to the upside. So if somebody asked me and held a gun in my head and said, listen, the worst case scenario, we're Treasury rate's going to go 10-year. I'd say in the next seven years, you should be able to see 13 and a half, 14 percent. Yes. Now, I'm not saying we get there, but I really want to stress, you do not want to jump in front of this right now. But if this week closes under four and three quarters and the high yield close remains in the 460s, you buy the market looking for a bit of a retracement to potentially get back down to four and a quarter to 432. Or if it gets to four and three quarters on a closing basis first, you liquidate the trade. So you buy TLT below those levels. In other words, bad and yields are going to go down in the short term. Otherwise, we're look for why are rates going higher? Is it because the economy oh, is gangbusters easy. or because Tyler, Tyler Matson, everybody clap for who loves Tyler. I love Tyler. And what did he bring up today? A great <laughs> Chicagoan, Milton Friedman. And when he did, one of my 50 year veterans from the trading floor called me and said, boy, he's spot on. I had many meetings with Milton that if you want to know where Inflation has taken the markets, and why? Just look at government spending. The vigilantes have new horses, and they're riding, and I really do think that is the answer. We are spending too much. We are not learning to cut back. As a matter of fact, I think we're out of control as we approach a $2 trillion deficit, and this is the market's way to get Washington's attention. That's always been the case, though, hasn't it, to some degree, Rick? So why, no, why QE. 13%? QE changed everything. Yeah. Right, so do you think that the Fed, whoever the Fed may be within the next 10 years, is actually going to allow a rate that is above 13%? You can squeeze a water balloon will they be nine ways from Sunday, but eventually it pops out somewhere. They are running out of little tricks to pull out of their bag, and in my opinion, the quantitative easing removed many signals in the market that now it's trying to put back in place. And they could do as they wish. If they keep tinkering with this, the problem is we have too many large uh, economies that are going to be in the same boat. And who's going to end up buying this paper? Right. So, so the presumption here is you think the Fed put is done. And it requires the discipline for the Fed to state the course. And, and I agree. And I'm a student of history, probably less so than you. But I think all the way back to the first shenanigans, I think of long-term capital and I think of the Asian financial crisis. And I, I think that's where monetary accommodation went out of control. And I think it wasn't the 2007-8. I think it was 1997-98. Uh, BOJ, uh, I think they're the biggest wild card here. And, and I heard uh, over the weekend stuff that told me YCC is done, and I think that's a slingshot to U.S. yields higher. Oh, absolutely. And the Bank of Japan could actually pull the plug that drains the water on everybody's bathtub. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the real fear I have, is they have no idea how they could be the catalyst. They could be that one ping pong ball you throw in a room with a bunch of mousetraps with other ping pong balls, and then all of a sudden things start flying. Mousetraps? Mouse traps and ping pong balls. Mm -hmm. So, Rick, let me ask you. So, let's say um, rates just keep going up so much that they crush the economy, right? And so then, do we start to see rates really come back, or do you see stagflation and? I think Guy hit part of it. 1987, when we were in the pits, what we learned was that. When equities get really ugly, you see the Treasury complex start to do better. I think the signals being distorted has changed that to some extent. 
and it's going to have to get much uglier to get the attention of the bond market. But I think that dynamic will come to the rescue, but it's going to come to the rescue late in the game. Karen mentioned that we've, we've had rates at these levels before, which I totally agree with. It's a rate of change thing, though. And mm -hmm. think about 15 years of being conditioned liquidity, zero interest rates. People are not prepared, in my opinion, for what we've just seen over the last 18 months. Speak to that. Oh, yeah. Not only are they not prepared, I think that when many look at the markets and they scratch their heads, they just don't understand that the Fed held the beach ball underwater for so long, basically a decade of zero that shouldn't have been at zero, that ultimately the force that this thing's popping out, I think, is justified. If it, uh, if it pops to 13, let's pops. If the trajectory is very steep, does that imply that the bounce back is going to be steep as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. The uh, one-third or two-thirds retracement on some of those GAN numbers should be every bit as aggressive. That's why I do think we're going to get a pause, yeah. and I think we're going to consolidate here. But I urge people not to try to pick tops and yield. Let the market tell you you can dance between the raindrops a bit. Okay. But, again, your big call tonight sounds like north of 13 percent in the next 10 And that's the grand scheme of things, yes. When I take a look at the long-term monthly charts, that's what I see.